I want to leave you, I want to just start off the week with three pieces of advice for uh, you all. And uh, those pieces of advice come directly out of my own life. And I'm just going to tell you briefly where I am, how I got there, and why it is I've come to the point where I think these pieces of advice are absolutely essential for you not just having a good week, but a phenomenal life. Where am I at the moment? I, okay, I'm studied in this country. I studied in three countries, universities in three countries. I um, was called to the bar of England and Wales. Um, so if I was to practice in Scotland, I would need to partner up with a Scottish lawyer, but not in England, not in Wales, because you're called to that bar. Um, and as such, doing that work, I managed to be a part of a legal team that represented um, over 6,000 minors in South Africa who were affected by asbestosis uh, that was caused by their working conditions uh, that was uh, enforced by a, a British company. We sued them and we won that case. It was the largest group action case uh, at the time. Um, and so that was really fortunate for me to be involved there. And throughout my education, I'll just share one thing. Part of my education was in the United States. And they have a system over there called the semester system. And every semester, a student can make what they call the dean's list. And the dean's list is when you have a high GPA or high grades. Every semester of my years, I was on the dean list. I was averaging a 4.0, which is the highest average you can get in university in America. Why is that important? Why am I telling you that? Do your best and achieve excellence. Because it opens up a lot more opportunities. And even though I'm called to the bar and qualified as a barrister, the opportunities in my life has been vast as a result of making the most of my education. So one of the things I want to tell you is that sometimes people say to you, your pupils, that's one, sometimes they say students, sometimes they say pupils, and that's essential. Pupils, where's the pupil? In the I, how you spell I, E-Y-E. -E. What does the E-Y-E -E stand for? Enjoy your education. Enjoy, enjoy it. Don't endure it, enjoy it, because it's a fascinating thing. It is a beautiful thing, and it is a privilege, as you've heard before, to have this education. Less than, you're in a category of about 5% of the world to have the levels of education that you're having. So make the most of it. Some of the other things I'm doing in, in my life at the moment, because of my curiosity, this is another thing I want you to bear in mind. Always be curious and always operate beyond borders. Don't be limited by your title. Not because you're a student don't mean you can't be an author or an entrepreneur. So just because I was a lawyer didn't mean that I couldn't take up an interest in art. I took up an interest in art and now I'm an art consultant for the NHS looking at how mental health hospitals can be built with a design that inspires people. As, and that has very little to do with law, but a lot to do with the human imagination. Even Einstein said it. He said this thing of imagination and inquiry is even more important than intelligence. So never lose your quest for knowledge and for learning more and for being imaginative and creative, which you'll have to do this week. I also work for a gentleman they call uh, they call him the Duke of Edinburgh. Some guy married to the Queen. Um, I represent him. He has a program called the DOV, Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme. So I work yearly in presenting speeches to the Gold Award winners. By the way, I would recommend that program to anybody here. Anybody here on DOV? Very good. A statistic says that you are far more likely to be chosen on a job when applications are going forward and your pay grade is far more likely to be higher than the average. Why? Because they look at the DOV as a course, a sort of an obstacle course that you have gone through that has developed your character and employers are very impressed with it. So it's a great thing to do. 
So let me come, and, and that amongst other things, I'm a poet and so on and so forth. I do a lot of things. And I'm always taking the opportunity to learn new things and do new things. Let me come to the three pieces of advice. People used to ask me, why is it you score so highly? Why is it you always getting A's, 100% and so on in your exams? And I thought about it, and this is one of the reasons. I develop a respect for my professors, teachers, instructors, lecturers. I developed a respect. I noticed that the students who couldn't stand the teacher or the professor didn't do so well. They had a negative attitude to the person, thus to the subject. So whatever you do, whoever is presented and comes before you, that process has been done by your institution. You had no role in it. You didn't employ them. But have the confidence that the right decision was made to select that right person. Whether you instinctively like them or not, develop a respect a high positive regard because that allows you to know the person, regard the person, and receive the knowledge from the person. And I was able to even predict what questions were coming on the exam because I saw how the person interacted with various themes within the subject matter. So develop a respect for the person. Develop an appreciation for your instructor and you'll have many instructors in life even this week you are co-instructing each other so even in your group develop a respect for each other for where the other person is coming from for their diversity for their experiences try and develop that a regard a high regard for other people giving you instructions the second thing I'd like to tell you, and it's similar to the first, but this is now not directed at a person, directed at the subject. Fall in love with the subject matter that you're doing. Fall in love with it. When I was at law school, I noticed something. Everybody, they couldn't stand property and equity and trust. They just thought it was boring. They didn't like the subject. I decided I was going to fall in love with the subject. I read about it from different perspectives. I read it as if I was reading poetry. I read it as if I was reading my favorite novel. I wanted to know the ins and outs of it. I fell in love with it and therefore was able to do well in it. Right? Because there are some subject matters you might say, I didn't select this, but the school say I must do it, but I don't really like it. Change your attitude. You can fall in love with anybody. Anything, I should say. Anybody is sometimes more difficult. You can fall in love with any subject and just think about it as a universe of knowledge, as a package of information that you can consume that will become a part of you. So that's the, two, that's the first two pieces of advice. The third piece of advice I give to you. Do you guys get assignments and homework and those things at school? Anybody here get homework? Things you have to take home and do. Yeah, see some of you raising your hand. You're a bit of a quiet audience, that's fine. Don't worry. All right. How do you consider it when you get homework, when you get these assignments? What is your view on it? Anybody, I want to know, what is your view on the assignments or the homework you get to do? Our classroom. One volunteer. Yes. You're getting it for a reason. Right, all right? That leads me to another question. What do you think is the reason why you're getting these um, assignments, homework, problems to go and do? Anybody want to hazard a... Yes. You have to speak up a little bit. So you won't forget it. So that you'll learn from it, right? These are all good answers. I want to suggest what I think probably is the most profound reason for giving us this thing. You guys watch the news, right? What is the news often full of when you watch it? Anybody, you cannot shout it out. Yes. Uh -huh. Say that one more time. War. war, yes, war. The news is often full of war. What else is the news full of? Yes? Say that again. 
Somebody say it for me. Information, yes? And what is the nature often of the information we are hearing on the news? What is the nature of the information that is being communicated to us? What? You're saying something? Would you agree with me that what is projected at us are a lot of problems in the world? Raise your hand if you agree, or by assent, show by some kind of assent, if you agree with me that a lot of problems are being presented. Would you agree with me that this world is full of problems? Anywhere you look, it's full of problems. In the world, in your community, in your city where you come from, in your local area, there are problems. So therefore, if the world is full of problems, what kind of person is needed in the world? Most. So I heard somebody say, a problem solver. The world is in desperate and dire need for problem solvers. So when you get a piece of assignment and some work and some problem and say, solve these 10 maths problems and so on and solve this geography problem or do this thing or come up with this assignment, part of it, yes, is that you gain knowledge. But the more profound part of it is, to is for you to develop a habit of solving problems. Even this morning, you were presented with a problem, come up with a name. You had to collaborate, you had to think, you had to work it out. You had to think to yourself, what is it going to sound like and project like and so on and so forth. You had to have a common agreement among you. So, so given that we have such problems and some of them seem so intractable in the world, there is a process of education that gets you to constantly be looking at problems and solving them, coming up with a solution. The solution sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't work. You try again and you try again. So you get into a habit so you too can become a problem solver. A problem solver, not just of academia, but of the stuff of life. The thing we are living in, the thing we are experiencing, the things that your leaders are struggling with, your prime ministers and presidents and leaders of countries are struggling and haven't found a way through it. It is not to say that if they can't solve it, it can never be solved. It is to say that their incapacity to come up with a problem creates for us an urgency to be thinking about these things ourselves. So that your generation and our generation, I'm putting myself in your generation, we can work together to come up with an ideology, a way forward to have a better world for us all to live together. Those are my three points of advice I want to leave with you. And I look forward to working with you this week. And remember, you are the pupil in the enjoy your education. Thank you very much.